A distinguishing trait of aerospace technology is its inevitable change. The Air Force has always been dedicated to the advancement of science and engineering. As a result, it is continually applying new technologies to the production of superior weapon systems and equipment. This commitment becomes increasingly important as weapon systems become more and more complicated. In the Air Force, technology deals with the tools and techniques for carrying out the plans of our national defense. The direction and development of this technology is the mission of the Air Force Systems Command. More than 50,000 employees including an officer corps in which nearly two-thirds hold advanced degrees, are carrying out this mission for one purpose, to advance aerospace technology so they can acquire superior Air Force systems at the most effective cost. By its very nature, much of this work is directed toward the future. AFSC is now laying the foundation of the future Air Force. Today, the command is planning for some of the most sophisticated aircraft ever imagined. Concepts are now under study for the advanced tactical fighter. Planners must consider what the defense threat will be at the end of this century, and what technologies we can count on to be available. These same considerations are critical in the development of future airlift systems that will deliver vital logistic support in the event of war. Bomber programs must likewise account for tomorrow's missions, payloads, and the type of environment in which these aircraft will operate. Some future aircraft will likely operate both in and outside the Earth's atmosphere as trans-atmospheric vehicles. An aircraft which went through these types of studies well over 20 years ago is now emerging as our new strategic bomber. The B-1 will have a radar signature only a fraction of the B-52s. It will contain advanced avionic systems to provide increased penetration capabilities. Along with its intercontinental range, it will have tremendous weapons carrying versatility including the ability to carry cruise missiles, both internally and externally. This aircraft and its subsystems represent planned advanced technology that is now materializing to fulfill a specific Air Force mission. In the meantime, AFSC scientists and engineers acting for the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, are studying other future design technologies, such as those in the X-29A. Its unique feature is the forward swept wing design. Among its potential advantages are lower drag, high maneuverability, flexibility in design, and reductions in size, weight, and construction costs. Because of the stress on forward swept wings, a bonded fiber composite is used to increase the strength of the wings without adding unacceptable weight penalties. In addition, the X-29 has variable camber devices to alter the wing shape for changing flight conditions. 
In another area of flight technology, the AFTI F-16, or Advanced Fighter Technology Integration Program, has recently completed a one-year flight validation of a sophisticated flight control system. A computer-controlled flight system, along with some new control surfaces, allow this modified F-16 to maneuver laterally, change altitude without pointing its nose, and perform other unconventional maneuvers. The command is developing another flight control technology in the Integrated Flight Fire Control Program, or IFFC. The goal of this research is to integrate the flight control and the fire control systems of an aircraft so the pilot can make the necessary gross steering adjustments to align a target. Then the fire control system takes over the fine steering adjustments to direct the aircraft into a firing position. Although this technology is being demonstrated on the F-15, it is generic in nature and could be applied to any modern fighter. To evaluate the IFFC system, a series of flight tests was conducted. It was first flown against tow targets in live firing demonstrations. The system allowed the pilot to destroy the towed target. Then, the aircraft flew against various manned aircraft in a variety of difficult angles and maneuvers. Even at difficult angles, the IFFC system scored numerous simulated hits on the targets. In a final demonstration, the F-15 was pitted against a full-size radio-controlled drone for a live fire test. The drone was scheduled to fly a series of maneuvers, beginning with the most difficult aspect angles at about 4 Gs. The F-15 trailed 18,000 feet behind. The drone went into a 4 G turn at 400 knots. The F-15 pilot also went into a turn, and when closer to the target, he coupled the IFFC system. Of the rounds fired, the system scored an unheard of percentage of hits at that difficult an angle. This amazing success verified that the aircraft gun could be an all aspect weapon and not merely used to hose down targets from behind. The command is continuing development of the integrated flight fire control system to adapt it to the air to ground gunnery and bombing modes. Future aircraft, whatever their configuration and advanced systems, will also be employing new materials for major structural parts. The command evaluates new materials as it continually seeks to improve the critical strength to weight ratio. One of the most promising developments is boron and graphite composites. Systems Command engineers have already demonstrated that this material can equal or better the performance of metals in primary structures, like wings, and that it can be repaired after sustaining minor battle-type damage. Research is continuing into the repair potential of this material after severe damage. Some Air Force aircraft already contain composite materials, but as new aircraft enter the inventory, they will be built with even more advanced composites. Just as the technologies of new materials are accelerating, so are the processes used to build materials and aerospace systems. 
A major thrust in this area is the Integrated Computer-Aided Manufacturing, or ICAM program. This effort is aimed at increasing the productivity of the aerospace industry in the United States. The command is advancing the state of the art in basic aerospace manufacturing technology and methods to establish a uniform system in the aerospace community. A system that integrates various stages of manufacturing processes could benefit all major areas of contracting work. By managing efforts involving the latest in computer technology, AFSC is striving to develop an overall ICAM architecture that could be individually tailored to accomplish almost any manufacturing task. On the shop floor, this would manifest itself in computerized machinery and robotic systems that perform both routine and complicated tasks. These systems would produce cost-effective and quality items for future Air Force products. Work of this type is, at the same time, advancing computer and other electronic technology. Perhaps nowhere is this more evident than in the area of simulation, where Systems Command has been a major developer for several years. The Air Force uses simulation for a variety of purposes, such as evaluating new hardware and software systems, part task training, studying human performance in dynamic environments, and basic flight training. In order to make simulation even more valuable and cost-effective, the command is developing new computer-generated video imagery. It is stimulating this technology so future pilots and other users will see high-resolution video with realistic features and texturing. Another way in which Systems Command is moving the Air Force further into the future is through the development of new fuels for aircraft and missiles. Because the range of a vehicle can be directly related to the density of the fuel used, the command guided the development of new high-density liquid fuels for cruise missiles. The missile's volume limitations made denser fuels a logical solution for obtaining greater standoff range. These fuels increase standoff range by delivering more energy per gallon, providing greater aircraft and air crew survivability and effectiveness. With the advancements in high density fuels, it now appears that the development of liquid fuels has reached a practical limit. Therefore, AFSC scientists and engineers have turned their attention to possible alternatives, such as carbon slurry fuels. Research work in this area led to the development of a slurry fuel which can produce about 50% more BTUs per gallon than the standard jet fuel, JP4. One of the main problems in this work was devising a formula that would keep solid carbon particles suspended in a liquid blending fuel. As a solution, Carbon slurry fuel also contains a surfactant, enabling the fuel to remain well mixed over long storage periods and under a variety of environmental conditions. At present, researchers are evaluating this fuel to ensure its use in non-exotic fuel systems. Another alternative fuel, which shows promise, is produced by extracting oil from shale. Mining this product is currently more expensive and complicated than producing conventional petroleum. However, it can be produced in an environmentally safe manner and has the potential to become a valuable Air Force fuel. Although the Air Force is not directly involved in the mining or production of shale oil, it is interested in its future potential. Therefore, 
Systems Command is evaluating the use of shale-derived jet fuel in current Air Force engines in order to expand the availability of hydrocarbon fuels to meet Air Force needs. Unraveling nature's mysteries and adapting them for Air Force needs is just part of AFSC's job when it comes to developing technology. This is especially true in the area of laser research. Harnessing light and making it work for the Air Force has been a continuing area of study in the Air Force Systems Command for over 15 years. The first laser units were small and of relatively low power. Many low-powered lasers are serving today as laboratory tools for a wide variety of applications. But the Air Force has another interest in lasers. Lasers of much higher energy that could be used as weapons. Because laser light can inflict damage on almost any type of material, AFSC scientists have conducted many tests over the years to determine how different types of high energy lasers affect the materials used in military hardware. In this way, they are gaining valuable insight into how the laser can be used as an important tool in our national defense. In the early 1970s, the command conducted the first test of a high-powered laser against a flying target. In this case, a small drone. Because the laser energy travels at the speed of light, it can strike the target almost instantly, minimizing the need to lead the target as with a conventional weapon. Although this test illustrated the potential of laser weapons, the pointer tracker system had the advantage of being securely anchored to the ground. Transferring this technology into an aircraft presented a new set of problems as far as the laser platform was concerned. To assess this problem, the command established the Airborne Laser Laboratory as a technology demonstration base for airborne laser development. It was a specially modified KC-135 outfitted with a carbon dioxide gas dynamic laser system. On top, the laser pointer tracker. In 1983, this flying laboratory tested its capabilities against an airborne target, an AIM-9 air-to-air missile. This experiment demonstrated the feasibility of tracking and engaging small, fast-moving targets. In a final experiment, the ALL engaged a BQM-34 subsonic target drone. The laser beam was held on the designated aim point until the target was destroyed. Space age technology is nothing new to the Air Force Systems Command. Its scientists and engineers have been engaged in creative problem solving for many years. Part of this effort has been channeled into the Navstar Global Positioning System. Six Navstar satellites are currently in orbit. Eighteen more will be launched to provide precise navigation on land, sea, or in the air anywhere in the world. The command also develops and launches the Defense Satellite Communication System, which has been in operation since the late 1960s. A new phase of more powerful and longer-lasting satellites is being developed for the Department of Defense to provide voice and data communications virtually around the world. The inertial upper-stage booster is another development of AFSC. 
It was designed to place satellites into geosynchronous orbits using expendable space launch boosters or the reusable space shuttle. These diverse technologies that are the future tools of our national defense are but a sampling of the wide spectrum of scientific and engineering programs under AFSC's management. Through a concerted management effort, the command's workforce is exploring technologies for every measure of practical knowledge that can be applied to Air Force systems. The fulfillment of this effort is directly related to this workforce, one of the most highly educated and dedicated groups of scientists and engineers in the world. They remain dedicated to today's technology, extending toward its outer limits. And in so doing, they are shaping the Air Force of the future.